Step into a world of whimsy and wonder where colorful characters embark on musical adventures in a magical forest. This beloved 1970s TV series continues to captivate audiences with its catchy tunes and vibrant storytelling. The show's enduring popularity lies in its quirky characters and playful escapades which have entertained generations. One memorable antagonist, a wacky villain with outrageous schemes, keeps viewers hooked with her unpredictable antics. But beyond the fun and games, the series explores themes of friendship, perseverance, and acceptance resonating with viewers of all ages. Its timeless lessons make it more than just a lighthearted sitcom. What scenes or moments from this classic series have stayed with you? Share your fond memories and experiences in the comments below. You won't want to miss out on this trip down memory lane. In the groovy 70s, a charming TV series brought joy to viewers with its catchy tunes and lovable characters. Set in the enchanting forest of tranquility, the show introduced four British fairies resembling insects joy, a beautiful butterfly, IQ, a grasshopper, courage, a ladybug, and harmony, a firefly. Together with their friend Sparky, a fellow firefly, they navigated the whimsical forest life. However, their peace was often disrupted by the mischievous rock which Benita Bazaar who had a thing for feathers. Despite only running for two seasons, the show left a mark on fans. The cast, featuring Caroline Ellis, John McIndoe, John Philpot, and Wayne Laria, brought the characters to life with their performances. Unfortunately, after the series ended, plans for a movie adaptation fell through, and the actors returned to England. Nevertheless, the Bugaloose has a dedicated fan base, with fan sites like Tranquility Forest curated by Bill Ohm, gaining popularity. Even today, cast members occasionally visit these sites, reminiscing about their time on the show and connecting with fans. As someone who grew up watching, the music in particular stands out, with the characters showcasing lovely voices that still connect with audiences. Personally, Sparky was my favorite, and I'm sure many others felt a similar connection to one or more characters. In conclusion, this groovy show may be a blast from the past, but its charm and nostalgia continue to captivate audiences. Whether you're revisiting childhood memories or discovering the series for the first time, it offers a whimsical escape into a world filled with music, friendship, and adventure. Behind Benita Bazaar's jukebox, the cast of the show discovered an unexpected hangout the abandoned set of the USS Enterprise Bridge from Star Trek. During their downtime, the boys enjoyed spending time there. Billy Barty, known for his drumming skills, learned to play in the 1930s for a vaudeville act with his sisters. This talent proved useful for the Bug Aloose, where he frequently showcased his drumming abilities. Budget constraints led to the exclusion of different towns and villains intended for the show. The Super Square was envisioned as a bland town inhabited by square-shaped people with square-shaped houses and pets. Downtown was supposed to feature the creepy underground lair of the militant Big Bummer and his general bumblers who had their marching band, the moldy figs, and the old notes. The chic vermilion villains and the sinister puppeteer Uncle Emil with his yellow bus and the puppets corncob marionettes that popped apart like popcorn were also planned adversaries for the bug loose. Martha Ray initially declined the role of Benita Bazaar on a children's show, fearing it would harm her career. However, Sid Croft, the show's creator, and her friend persuaded her to join. Croft drew inspiration from a drag performer named Bibi Bazaar at a Miami club, the jewel box for Ray's character's name. The Bugaloose creators had already conceived the title before the show. In the film Pup Stuff, they had Wichapoo pretend to be Betsy Bugaloo. This pre-existing idea influenced the naming process. Following their production of H.R. Pup Stuff, Sid Croft and Marty Croft ventured into their second series. Departing from film, they opted for videotape, aiming to cut production costs and leverage the emerging chroma key visual FX technology. Notably, Martha Ray, honored with a Jean Hirschholt Humanitarian Award in 1969, directed her estate to bequeath the award to the Friars Club in 1997. A trailblazer, she became the club's first female honorary member, recognized for her charitable efforts in entertaining U.S. troops. Drawing on his childhood experiences in the circus, and years spent globetrotting with a marionette act, creator Sid Croft shaped the series. Rooted in a desire to reconnect with nature, he envisioned Tranquility Forest as the backdrop for the show. Set against the backdrop of changing production methods and the humanitarian contributions of Martha Ray, the bug loose took shape under the creative vision of Sid Croft, a man whose wanderlust and love for nature birthed a distinctive TV series. Following her challenges, Martha Ray, known for her role as boss witch in a film by Sid and Marty Croft, became a part of this series despite concerns about her personality. 
The Croft brothers meticulously searched for British youngsters with musical talent to portray the title characters, but overlooked acting skills until filming commenced. It was an oversight they regretted, marking the challenges faced during production. In the heart of Hollywood, a vibrant and fantastical TV show captured the imaginations of viewers. Lucille Ball, known for her role in Here's Lucy, often visited the set of this peculiar show. She marveled at the delicate wings and whimsical antics of the fantastical creatures who roamed there. The show's creators, Sid and Marty Croft, had high hopes for their creation. However, setbacks soon followed. Despite signing with Capitol Records, their album and single for a friend failed to make waves, leading to their dismissal by the label in 71. Undeterred, the Crofts and their fantastical friends embarked on a new venture in 99. Plans for a feature film adaptation were in motion, with discussions involving the talented filmmaker Hansen. Despite initial enthusiasm, the project eventually stalled, leaving fans longing for more adventures. Despite the highs and lows, the show's legacy endures, fondly remembered by those enchanted by its whimsical world and catchy tunes. Their story, a blend of creativity and perseverance in the face of challenges, remains a reminder of the magic that once captivated audiences worldwide. Martha Ray once owned the Five O'Clock Club in Miami, Florida. Walker Edmiston also voiced Sparky the Firefly on occasion. For the flying sequences, the boys were strapped into standard harnesses, which were concealed under their pants, but this was problematic with Joy's skirt, so Caroline Ellis had to learn to balance herself on a precarious swing-like flying rig. In 1990, producer writer William Winkler sued Billy Barty in small claims court for money owed on the comedy series Short Ribs. The press had a field day with the publicity appearing in newspapers, radio news shows, and television news stations across the country and internationally. Barty himself admitted it was the most negative publicity he ever had, with headlines such as Small Billy Barty and Small Claims, and Barty Comes Up Short in Small Claims. Similarly, Short Ribs writer Warren Taylor also won a case against Barty in Small Claims Court. The 30th issue of the Animaniacs comic book from October 1997 includes a spoof called The Warner Bugs, featuring Yako, Wacko, and Dot as flying insects who confront Wanda Weird. This spoof takes direct jabs at the songs and star Martha Ray, closely mirroring the themes of the Bugaloose. Before all this, Billy Barty hosted his own daily kids television show, Billy Barty's Big Top, where he entertained and informed viewers and studio audiences between reruns of the Three Stooges films. It aired weekday afternoons on KTTV CH11 in Hollywood, California from the early to mid-1960s. Martha Ray's successful career, well explored in the slapstick queens, showcased her amazing skills and versatility. In her time in Mexico, she made headlines by divorcing Captain Neil Lang, highlighting her independence and the complexities of her personal life beyond Hollywood's glamour. Switching to children's TV, the search for the actor to play IQ on the popular American show created much excitement. Phil Collins, among the final contenders, stirred anticipation. As the competition narrowed down to the last three, tension rose, leaving audiences eager to see who would bring IQ to life on screen. Martha Ray's impact on entertainment history endures, a story of triumphs and challenges that inspires generations of performers and fans worldwide. The tale of Martha Ray, Phil Collins, and the quest for the perfect IQ. In an unexpected twist during production, a cast member of a beloved 1970 TV series faced a personal tragedy. One of the lead actors, Caroline Ellis, experienced a loss on set when her beloved pet passed away. The incident cast a shadow over the filming, revealing the challenges the cast had to overcome. The TV series, known for its whimsical charm, was not immune to real-life difficulties. Caroline Ellis, in particular, had to cope with the grief of losing her furry friend while working on the show. The emotional impact added complexity to the production, highlighting the unseen struggles behind the scenes. Navigating the fantastical world of the series presented unique challenges for the cast. Caroline Ellis's loss showed the unpredictability of life, even in a lighthearted setting. Despite personal hardships, the cast displayed resilience in continuing their work, showcasing the human experiences behind the camera. In the world of the TV series, where laughter prevails, the cast's ability to persevere through sorrow adds depth to the narrative. It's a reminder that even in a world of fantasy, real-life challenges exist. Such unforeseen events contribute to the show's story, reminding viewers of the human aspect behind the scenes. In a twist of fate, one of the actors from a beloved children's show faced a tragic end after its conclusion. Following the series' end, John McIndoe, who played a character named Courage, passed away due to an illness. 
His untimely death served as a reminder of life's fragility, even amidst the world of entertainment. The show, created by Sid and Marty Croft, was a unique offering during the early 1970s. Set in a fantasy realm called Tranquility Forest, it followed a group of insect-like characters forming a musical group to thwart the schemes of the villainous Bonita Bazaar. Featuring colorful costumes, catchy songs, and whimsical adventures, the show captivated young viewers nationwide. Its mix of fantasy, music, and humor made it a favorite among children. Despite its short run, the show left a lasting impact on audiences, remaining a nostalgic favorite for many. Its imaginative premise and memorable characters continue to hold a special place in fans' hearts, keeping the spirit of tranquility forced alive even decades later.